This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Aftershock's Open Ear Headphones. Visit spartan.aftershocks.com for $30 off a wireless pair. That's spartan.aftershocks.com. Welcome back to Spartan Up Podcast. I have... Retired Colonel Tim Nye. I have wishes he's retired everything around here, <laughs> Peter Borden. Hello? I have will retire if she ever starts working, Safra. <laughs> yes. oh. And Dr. Johnny. And Marion, who's always working behind the camera there. Hey, speaking of working and retiring, we have this week Mark Rampala. He was the CEO of Zico, the founder of Zico, Coconut Water. Um, this guy sold the company. He uh, is doing all kinds of other stuff that we're going to find out about. Really interesting, though. I drank a lot of that coconut water here in Pittsfield. I know you, you did, did, too. Oh, yes, I, I did. It got me through many a death race. Yeah, it is good stuff. But we're going to find out about what Mark's doing now because that's the most interesting thing. What do you do once you sell your company that's hugely successful and go on to do more with your life? We are here for Spartan Up Podcast in the hills of Malibu next to a swimming pool with Ben Greenfield uh, swimming. You can see him underwater there. He is biohacking his swim. He's going to pop up any second. I think he's trying to hold his breath for 12 or 13 13 minutes. Let's see what he's got. Let's see what he's got. Can he make it? Can he make it? Can he make it? He doesn't make it. He's got to be able to make that. Let's see. Let's see. There he goes. Yes. Ben makes it. Nice. (laughs) All right, so we're here with Mark Rampola for Spartan Up Podcast. And that, I, I pronounced it you right, You did, right? yeah. And uh, I know Mark. It's got to be seven years. Yeah, at, at least. least seven yeah. years. And the reason I know him is my wife found coconut water. I don't know where she found it when we were in Vermont. Yeah. Came home and said, find this company and take an interest in it. And it was <laughs> is Zico. that right? It was Zico. I didn't hear that part of the story. Yeah. If I remember correctly, what yeah. you told me when we first talked is, yeah. You thought it saved your life it biking did. across uh, uh, the desert. It wasn't biking. It was running. It was and, running. And, um, and the reason she said that was because she knows what it did. She was with me in that wow. race. Wow. So back up, and I'm in, um, I'm in uh, uh, Fiji, and I, I got uh, giardia and um, dysentery. Oh, wow, and yeah. And I lost 32 pounds in eight days. Oh, my God. And um, I was basically dying. Yeah. And, and uh, somebody started giving me coconuts, fresh coconuts. Wow. And I recovered, and I finished the race 32 pounds lighter. Oh, my God. Yeah. And so um, when we talked to doctors and stuff, they said, well, you got all the electrolytes, everything you needed from the coconuts. Wow. And so years later, when she found the coconut water that was being sold on the shelf, yeah. that's why I got in touch with you. Ah, uh, it's incredible. So you founded Zico. I did. Yeah, it's 2004. And which is still, it's part of Coca-Cola. It now. is, yep. They're scaling it across the globe right now. Nice. So tell us um, how that came about. Yeah, so I, I, I first discovered Peace Corps Volunteer, not unlike you, at, in, Latin, in Latin America, in yep. another part of the tropics, and um, as a Peace Corps volunteer. And it was literally written into the Peace Corps manual. Yep. When you're out of range of medical care, when you there's not clean water, have a coconut. You need additional electrolytes. And uh, so I kind of knew it from then, but it wasn't until almost a decade later that I was a corporate executive running a business in Latin America and not really thrilled with my life and kind of the corporate track I was on and decided I wanted to start a business but have it be something that meant something to me. Stop at that moment because there's a bunch of listeners, there's a bunch of viewers that are in their lives and they're, you know, you hear it all the time like, gee, I don't know if I'm happy with what I'm doing, I'm I'm not happy maybe in the relationship, whatever it is. Yeah. How do you pivot? Yeah, that, that that was a challenging one. It took some time but I think for me the first decision was I wanted to take control of my own life. I did not want to be kind of beholden to a corporation. Right. So it started with that decision. And, and, and it actually, I'll, I'll never forget a conversation I had with a friend, and I, I wrote about this uh, in, in, in my book recently, um, that was in Miami, um, on the, uh, you know, right on the beach, having a drink. And I tell a friend, um, yeah, you know, I'm not Coconut really- Coconut water, of course. Yeah, go, of course. <laughs> you know, I'm not really an entrepreneur. I've got a lot of friends that are entrepreneurs, but I'd like to help scale some business. And he turns to me and says, Mark, the only difference between you and an entrepreneur is an idea, and you're as capable as anyone that's coming up with an idea. Right. So I spent the next probably 45 days just brainstorming so, ideas. So back up, is it confidence that your friend, like, is that why people don't pivot? Right? 
Yeah, absolutely. Fear, insecurity, right. you know, they get uh, stuck in their ways, golden handcuffs, maybe something that they're in is working pretty well for them. Right. And But I think predominantly it's fear. Yeah. And you, um, how'd you get rid of the fear? Your buddy saying that to you? Yeah, I think, I think actually, no, it was a lot more than that. For me, I had to first identify a lot of those specific fears. Um, you know, am I really smart enough to do this? Right. Uh, should I really take the risk? I have two young girls. Um, so I wrote all those things down and, and started to call them limiting beliefs, things that were kind of limiting my ability to kind of take this next step. Sure. And I would literally write down the refuting statement to that. One of them was literally, oh, I must be such a, such a jerk to want more in my life. Don't I have enough? And I, you know, I would yeah. flip that around to say, I'm so excited to be able to go for things in my life that, and I'm going to contribute more than anybody I know. Wow. You know? So that's an interesting uh, way to do it, right? Because you can convince yourself of anything. Absolutely. Right or wrong. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Well, Henry Ford said, whether you believe you can or you believe yep. you can't, you'll be right. Exactly. Right? So true. So true. So you flipped it. You yep. wrote it down. You flipped it. Yep. And, then, and then it became a business plan? Well, no. Then what happened is what, what the thing I quickly realized, and you know, my, my wife was helpful in this process, was a lot of the ideas weren't that good, you know, and I quickly realized, and come to realize even more so, ideas are a dime a dozen, it's all about execution. And right. so what I, what I realized is I have to be very selective about those ideas, put them through a process to make sure that they're the right ones that I can commit to and have at least a higher probability of success. Right. And so um, I developed a series of screens. Some of them were typical business screens as it have growth potential, good margin potential, but a lot of them were very personal life decisions. Is this fit with my lifestyle? Right. Can I commit to this? What in are my words, girls going to think? It's, it's, if it's a very lucrative business, but it's unhealthy for people, you're probably not going to do Not for me, right? right? If it's a lucrative business, but it doesn't allow us to travel to great places, not right, right for me. If right. it doesn't, isn't something I think my girls are going to be interested in sure. 20 years from now and think it was cool, not right for me. But but that could change. I'm, I'm all, you're triggering things in my mind. That could change over time. Like you would have been different at 20 years old. Absolutely. It would have been a different filter. Yes, that's right? exactly right. right. Yeah, I was, I was in my early 30s. And um, right. so it was a time in life. I had my kids. I was married. You know, I was getting back to finally eating healthy. Healthy. I was uh, definitely super active. I was running a ton, sure. working out a ton. I'd stopped drinking, you know, eating crap food for a long time. So all those were relevant. But what I was able to do was also to at least look out a while. You know, I kind of thought about it in terms of a decade. Can I commit my life to this for a decade? And a lot of that stuff started to filter out, you know, yeah, it's like, sure. yeah, it's kind of interesting now, but is it really going to be interesting in 10 years? Yeah. It's impossible to know, but I could coconut water was on the list and I could at least say, wow, I could imagine doing this for 10 years. Sure. And, um, and so then you take the plunge. I took the plunge, you know. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Aftershock's open ear headphones. So Johnny, have you got a chance to try out these uh, new headphones? Yeah, I have. And I got to tell you, I was a slow starter, but I'm super sold on them now. Um, when I first got them, I put them on and I thought, hmm, sounds okay. And, uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm used to, like, the, the, the big over-the-ear full immersive thing. And I uh, was trying to figure out what the value of this is. And then I, I had to meet my daughter's boyfriend at the airport. And I had these on, and I heard, hey, Johnny. And I turned around, and it's funny because I was totally into the music. But I heard, hey, Johnny. And I turned, he's right there. And I realized that as I've been walking to the airport, I wasn't in my own little dangerous world. You're not paying attention to what's going on around you. And... Suddenly, I really, really appreciated that. Well, I'll tell you, it's funny. When you said in your own dangerous world, that's exactly, I love these things. And I was, I got a little bit of a head start because my son had some and I tried them on before we received ours. For me, I'm a guy who for 50 plus years has gone to sleep listening to music or some kind of talk radio sports show as a little kid, right? Yep. And I always had to either put the earbuds in or the headphones and you're uncomfortable, the rest of it. So there's a comfort issue. Yep. Then there's also safety slash security issue, you know, being the uh, ex-Marine, ex-Ranger on guard duty kind of thing. I can, I can hear everything else going around me. Now, I can personally focus out other noise if I want to. Yep. But if I want to be on alert and still know what's happening around me while I'm asleep and I can hear my dog get up and move or the cat jump off the, off the dresser and break something or, you know, somebody in my yard, the deer or whatever, yep. I'm up and moving because I'm not blocked in. I can hear it perfectly. Yeah. And yet the sound in my headphones, 
I, I really enjoy them. I like them because they're light. I think they're very clear. I think they provide an element of safety, yep. especially if you're out doing, if you're out running on a trail or something, you have an, an ability to be aware. It's when you notice after a couple of days how aware you are of everything around you and suddenly realize the massive value of these. Yeah, well, the bottom line is you can, you can listen to Spartan Up podcast and go about your normal day with them on, right? Visit spartan.aftershocks.com and save $30 off a wireless pair. That's spartan.aftershocks, S-H-O-K-Z.com, spartan.aftershocks.com. And, that, and by the way, all that work up to there sounds hard, but, but stepping over the line. Oh, right? no, no idea how hard that was, right? It's easy to read the books and hear about how improbable entrepreneurial success plan, is, write a business people, plan. Yeah. But I quit a pretty lucrative corporate job right. and uh, you know, moved my fam, wife and family from Central America to New York City wow. to launch this thing. And that's, and when, real. that's when it became painful, too. Right. <laughs> and and um, I learned later in life, and you tell me if you agree with this, that uh, the reason you were successful, the reason you are successful, is because you had no choice. Absolutely. Right? Had you not moved, you kind of kept your job, yeah. you had your toe in it. You got to go all in. You got to go all in. Look, I, I advise, I'll tell you what worked for me, but I also advise entrepreneurs all the time, look, don't make that leap until you are really sure. There's a lot you can do to test the waters, right. to, to have a plan B, to make sure, get as confident as you can, but there's no substitute for making that leap. And, and to me, that meant not only making that leap, but locking myself in, because I didn't trust myself to stick for it for five or 10 years yeah. until I invested a big chunk of savings. I um, you know, got my wife to completely believe in it as well, quit my job, took my retirement, you know, put everything into this business. So I didn't have a choice but to, for it to be successful. And, um, and then what happened? Well, then it was five years of hell. Right, everything that can go wrong <laughs> yeah. goes wrong. We were on the verge of bankruptcy. I um, met you, it had to be right after the market collapsed. Yeah, yeah, it would have been about 2008. 2008, so. right? Yeah. And um, I had dreams of putting big money in your company. Yeah. And, and my uh, money and dreams matched. <laughs> like yeah, people. yeah, right. absolutely. Right. Look, and, and what's interesting is we had, um, you know, when we launched in 2004 and five, it was really hard to get angel investors at that stage. I wasn't a proven entrepreneur. So we muddled along. We were able to raise some money, but we were just muddling along. And it wasn't until that time when we started to get some traction. But so for those- Before the crash or right Before after? the crash. Right. And, and by, by in, interesting, by that time, we had enough track record to attract some capital, sure. but nobody was writing checks. I, I know, I know. <laughs> I, I remember the meeting yeah. that I had. Yeah. I, I was, I don't know. I was definitely more upset at my own finances than I was about not yeah, putting more course, money in Of course, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. So, so, um, so it's hell for five years. You're banging your head against the wall. Yep. What, what do you do? Look, for me, I think um, it was a you know stay in the game, right? Just do whatever it takes stay to stay in the, in the game, game. Because you told everybody, you took yeah. money from people. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now, what I will admit and was really powerful for me is, I did go to my wife at some point and say, "Look, I don't want to give in." But if you're done, I'll give in. I'll get a job. We'll figure out what to do with this business. Right. You know, I, I, there was no pride of ego, no ego in that. Mm -hmm. And it was an honest communication. But the beauty was I had a feeling she would double down and she did. So there were a couple points where I said, when she started getting cold feet and started getting worried, where I'd say, look, if you really want me to, I'll give it up. Yeah. And she'd say, not just yet. Let's go a little further. For the listeners out there, um Behind every successful man is a more successful woman. And no question about I, that. I interviewed um, a guy, I think he started Zillow. I forget what podcast number it is, but Marion will put it across the screen. And uh, he decided him and his wife were going to row, you might know him, from um, San Francisco to Hawaii. Yes, yes. Sammy Inkin. Sammy Inkin. Sam, Sammy Inkin. Yes, you guys yes. got to look that up. He's awesome. And he told me, I don't know, he was five or ten days into the row. I don't know if you know this part of the no. story. And um, everything went wrong. A storm rolled in, and they got blown 10 days off course. Wow. And he starts literally crying, and he says, honey, we're done. We'll go back. She didn't want to go to begin with. She grabs him. She smacks him. She says, you told me we're doing this, and we're doing this. Get yeah. your shit together. Yeah. And so women. They do. Right? You know, and my wife, Maura, played a critical role in the business at many points, and, and mainly in our lives. And, um, and um, 
if I can give a little plug, I did write yeah, a book no, about it. this, yeah. uh, High Hanging Fruit, to check it out. But it really kind of goes through a lot of that process that we had back and forth. But there were also times when she forced me to draw some lines around life, right? Because there was a time when I was working you know, like crazy in my day job while trying to start this business. And I'll never forget this one conversation with her where she basically said, look, Mark, it will not be this way. Like, I understand what it takes to build a business, but if you're gonna do this this hard, right. something's gonna give, your health, our relationship, your relationship with our kids. And so she helped me recognize that I, gotta, I, I can build this business, but I wanted to elevate it and build a life. So we, we interviewed um, the founder of uh, Angel, what's it called? The, the, Angelist. 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 And he, um, he said- Naval, yeah. Yeah, Naval, and he said, you can pick one thing and do it really well, but everybody tries to do three things, right? So family, business, job, you can't, you're not gonna be successful. Yeah, and look, I, I have a very strong opinion about that, and, and for better or worse, and this is kind of not the way most entrepreneurs think, I knew I was not gonna compromise my health, my marriage, right. my kids. Right. And, but what it forced me to do is get really efficient right. and really smart and also empower people, hire great people, bring on investors. I, I wish I, I could, probably could have owned twice as much of the company, right. but I brought in investors, right? Sure. I could have, I brought in seasoned people and gave them a piece of the company. I did things. Because, because family was non-negotiable. It was non-negotiable. Because right. my definition of success, right. if I made a ton of money, Ended was doing these interviews somewhere. and was divorced right. and- Unhappy kids. Uh, right. Three heart attacks right. and unhappy kids, right. that would have been a loss to me. Right. I like that. And so um, we talk a lot about knowing your true north, yeah. family, right? Yeah. Health was true north, and that your values and beliefs line up. So you valued your family, you valued uh, your health, but if your belief was it's okay to run wild, they're not lining up. Absolutely, right? absolutely. So, and what I found is, and I've seen this with other entrepreneurs as well, that it, it is possible to build an incredibly successful business with those with those requirements and and when I looked at people that were absurdly successful entrepreneurs that didn't have a life had lost their health and had kind of crappy lives that's not a that, 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 that wasn't a model for me so you know for me I just because is that success exactly right. wasn't for me it wasn't for me yeah different if you're single Def, totally right. different and totally I, feel, different. I feel that way with Spartan I say to people all the time um, boy it'd be a lot different if I wasn't married I didn't have four kids I was 25 years old well, we're going for it. We're going to yeah. make this a $5 billion business. Exactly, right? exactly. So. And, and you know, with the caveat that you still have your health, right? I've yeah. seen a lot of... Well, 20, at 25, you feel 25, like, it doesn't matter. It's out the window. It, it does, But, but I'm, I'm with it. We know now, but, Yeah, right? absolutely. Try to convince a 25-year-old. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> so, um... So what are you doing now? Yeah, so I, um, after I uh, sold Zico, yeah. I started doing some angel investing myself in nice. sort of health and wellness companies, um, some, some tech, but all around sort of social impact, personal empowerment. Yeah. And I recently started a small venture capital fund called Power Plant Ventures. So we invest in um, you know, early stage food and beverage companies that are trying to re transform our food system to make it healthier, more ethical, more sustainable. And so I personally, and through the fund, invested in about 40 companies. Wow. And uh, so work with those entrepreneurs. So it doesn't sound like you do anything half that. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, nice. yeah. And so you're staying in touch with them and watching? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of them, I'm only on a few boards, but I you know, coach, consult, help where I can. Nice. But I'm an absolute believer in, in finding the best entrepreneurs and letting them do what they do well. Nice. And how's that going? Uh, so far, so good on paper. No, nice. no, no exits yet, but that's kind of the nature but, of it. But fun to, to, oh, I'm to having a blast. look behind the glass and uh, see in. You know, I, I think there's a, there's a world, a whole new generation of entrepreneurs that are smarter, more dedicated, more capable, and they're addressing some really big problems and opportunities. Sure. So I'm just having a blast kind of uh, feeding off their, en their energy as and well. And staying relevant. Absolutely. As we yeah. get older, we learn that word. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's nice to at least try. I like to think I am. You got to talk to some of them. What? Um, where could we find your book? Or, oh, uh, High Hanging Fruit. Um, it's uh, Amazon, all yeah. the typical booksellers. And then if we wanted to check out your company. Yeah, uh, um, PowerPlantVC.com. Powerplant PowerPlantVC.com. Yep. Three, two or three takeaways for... Um, that you mentioned during the thing. For right? entrepreneurs, for, well, mainly? Well, for anybody, for somebody out there that's Look, just trying to get motivated with the cash. You, you, know, you know, what I've, I, I, I felt, I've learned, and for me personally, I felt like um, fear, recognize your fears, yeah. um, confront them, um, think about the kind of life you want to have, 
and go for it, but recognize and be very thoughtful about defining success. And I think if you define success in the right way about health, relationships, um, being a good contributing person to the world, and finding a business that supports that, you can't lose. The business may be huge, the business may be small, but if you're doing something you really love that makes a positive impact in the world, and you're meeting your definition of success, you're a winner. Love it. All right, you guys got that. If you can't figure it out after this, hang up the gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. All right, man, good, good to see you. Stuff. Yeah. I thought it was really, uh, really good interview. The the guy, you know, as so many of these people are very, very successful, but realized that success was going to come at a cost, right? Yep. And had to limit his own success yep. to cut it out because he prioritized family, which is something I always, I always admire in someone. And then he gave up control of his own company or parts of it, mm-hmm. so that he could limit himself, so he could allow himself to be freer and broader. Yep. And then he's taken that in into retirement and taking kind of that mindset and spread out and invested in multiple companies, right, 30 or 40 companies all at the same time, knowing that not all are going to succeed, but also knowing that all need an opportunity and that they're going to go somewhere, right? Yeah, he, he had a similar right. philosophy to Naval Ravikant, another interview right. that we did, uh, the guy from AngelList. Um, and he had said, you can have anything as long as it's one thing, but you can't have everything. So decide what that one thing is. And, and that's what, uh, what Mark said as well when he said, if I wanted that huge success, I could have had it. You know, he was very successful. But if, I, but if I wanted to be a billionaire, I could have had it. But the things that were non-negotiable for me were family and health. And if I'm not going to sacrifice those things, I'm going to have to and he, he used the term draw some lines around my life. So like you say, he made some compromises in terms of you know, some of the control he gave up and some of the uh, equity he gave up in coconut water so that he could maintain that health and that balance well, in other areas. From all of these podcasts and just from you know, our own, our own uh, experiences living, For people who are focused to that level, it's normally the family or the health that that we're both that get axed, right? Joe talks about it all the time about how these guys are 65, they retire and they drop dead at a heart attack, you know, a couple days later. You see it, you used to see it in the military quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Same thing. I mean, they're just driven, 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 and boom. And I can't tell you how many retirement ceremonies I went to of senior officers who said, Hey, I want to tell all you guys, spend time with your wives and stuff. I didn't. I lost my wife and my kids and stuff. They, uh, you, know, you probably God. should have got that 20, 30 years ago, not, not last week. But okay, yeah. uh, I'll take it. So anyway, it's good to see that, that uh, Mark understood it kind of early and, and prioritized that. Yeah. And then the other thing that was really cool is um, what do you do after you've sold your company, you know, to a, a, a mega company, you're a success by all measures. And what I love that he did is he said, I, I've uh, become a bit of an angel investor myself. I've actually uh, taken a position in a bunch of small companies trying to get to where I was. And uh, I think he said there are up to 40 companies right now that he's involved in to some degree and trying to help these people uh, achieve success as well. But, but doing it on his own terms. You know, like he's, he's, not, uh, he's not working the, the crazy hours. He's enjoying life a lot, um, but still giving back. And I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, well, he's, an, he's another guy, though, right, that kind of, I don't know that he set out to form this company. Sure, started, yeah. right? I mean, he, he talked about the um, Peace Corps, the Peace Corps yeah. and getting the classes and being told if you're ever in danger or dehydrating or out there on your own, grab, gra- grab a coconut because that's going to be your, your life preserver, right? Yeah. Yeah. And from that, you know, expand it. Go ahead, please. Oh, my <laughs> pleasure. Well, coconut, coconut's a seed, right? And the thing I, about... Yes, I guess. Yeah, coconut's a seed. And uh, it can actually float on the ocean for a long time and then it lands and then it props up its little beautiful coconutty embryo or <laughs> cotyledon or it's actually is it a grass anyways i'll relook it up but the thing is about a coconut is like that is one of those like the cattails of the wetlands a coconut you can thatch a roof from the leaves of it you can burn what can you do with its husk brigadier you can burn it you can, sure. burn, you it, can burn it and it's the most beautiful round orb glowing fire you've ever seen in your entire life you can Eat the meat. You can make oil out of it. Coconut oil, if you do oil pulling, if you look that up and you swish it in your mouth, pulls all the toxins out of your body and you spit it out. You should do that every morning. Um, so what happens when you swallow it? Don't swallow it because it pulls out all the toxins in your body. Don't. Don't swallow <laughs> it. Great question. Well, I thought it was spit. coconut water. Swallow. I put it in my coffee. Coconut water. We're talking about coconut oil. I'm talking about, okay, see, well, I'm talking I'm, about okay, the, well, holistic, the, the holistic supply of the coconut tree and just making sure that like every facet of that is usable. And there's cultures whose like entire... Food, shelter, fire, fiber, all of that is you built around the coconut. And it's been amazing to see it become so popular. You know who because else eats coconuts? Who? You? Crabs. 
Crabs eat coconuts? Yes, people fish with coconuts. Achamalaha. Uh, on the well, islands. Did not know that. That's, that's great. Pretty, that's fascinating. And um, yeah, that is fascinating. What and about I just taking think, a risk, right? Uh, so you yeah. go home one day and you're sitting there and you go, honey, you know what? I'm starting a juice factory and we're going to raise, we're going to grow coconuts and make juice and yeah, yeah. coconut water called Zico. Yeah. And you go, we're all in. I mortgaged the house. I'm, I'm taking every single step we need to take, and we're committed to this thing. Yeah. And what do you think that reaction looked like? Well, and, and, and as he said, he couldn't have done it with, without her buy-in. Yeah. And, uh, and there were times when he wanted to give up, and he'd say, you know what, I think maybe, maybe this is it. And she was the one who said, no, no, we're, we're going to keep going. We're living on coconuts right now. This thing <laughs> better right, work. Exactly. Actually, well, it's and, a really good fast, coconut fast. <laughs> so that's really what Joe says you got to burn the boat. You got to right? burn the boat. Absolutely, going, which yeah. is fascinating. And, 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 really and that, that, and that one, well, just, no, just the idea that there are a lot of people who would be the first ones to put their hand up and say, "You know what? I've had enough. Let me off the ride, please." <sighs> Except oh. that they can't because they put all their chips in. The analogy is: Severa, if you burn the boat, you got to learn to swim, or build or a make raft, it, or make it work. No, no, but I mean, if you're in the or water, you burn the boat, burns, palms. you better know how to swim, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I guess. And, I, and, and, and the idea is it, it, when you're going to that shore and you're going to make your home there, if you burn the boat, you can't go back to where you were right. before. When I say you can't discover new lands without leaving the shore, some famous quote like that. Yeah, and I just think it's great. I mean, I think it's great that they sold to Coca-Cola, is it? Mm-hmm. And I just, I haven't done much research. I just, I hope their practices are nice and sustainable and organic and well, supporting the local economy. There, there are a lot of these companies, these small companies getting, getting bought up by the big ones. And I know that part of the concern is, you know, the selling out. Now this big mega corporation is just going to make it faceless and take away all the values. But the other side of it is that they're buying the culture. They're buying um, this, uh, this movement that people have towards healthier food. And so, you know, every time one of these small companies gets absorbed by the big company, it's also changing the big company. So it's not just that they're all getting good point. swallowed good up. Bad. You know, th- there's a reason that, that these big companies are buying these health-minded companies. It's because they can then shift their culture by yeah, way of adoption. They see the future, right? They're all Absolutely. about big companies around, and they're big because they know the trends. Yeah, absolutely. You know, they can see them and they can spot them down the road and they start moving towards them. So they may be, as we talk about riding the wave and stuff, they may be a little bit behind it, you know, because it's got to start and it's got to build, right? But if they're buying in, that's where you're going. I, I want to mention something else, too, that, um, you know, so many of our viewers, it's like, well, what, what can I use from this in, in my own life? And he talked about that so many people think that an entrepreneur is somebody else think that a successful business person is somebody else. And they might have an idea, but not doing anything with it because who am I to do? And I love that thing when he said, if you can just get over your limiting beliefs and you can develop some confidence, there's no reason in the world that you can't go and execute your own business idea. And that there are so many people who never really put their toe into that entrepreneurial pool because of a lack of confidence. And he talked about that he had to really reframe a lot of his own limiting beliefs where he had to look sure. and say, I'm not good at this. And instead of saying, I'm not good at this, it was, okay, what's a different way I could say that? It would be, my skill set is over here, and therefore I'm going to focus on that and then find other people who are good yeah. at these other things to support me. I think building a team is probably the most key part of being an entrepreneur. Yeah, absolutely. So I joke is the French word for poverty because <laughs> you have to uh, really make sure you have a good team and you're dedicated to it because it's a struggle and you got to yeah. push through it. And the other thing that he said is that uh, when you're filtering your ideas, one of the big filters is, can I see myself doing this 10 years from now? Because if it's an idea that you're excited about now, but you can't see yourself doing long term, you're never going to hang long which, enough to which, be successful. Which runs a little counter to, you know, it's never too late to start something. So as you get a little older, yeah. uh, 70, 70s or something, where you want to put your money? Uh, 10 years from now, I don't know. You've got 10 years, got 10 years left. Don't sell yourself short, Colonel. I don't have any money, do <laughs> but I've got 10 years, I think. I hey, and, and, and if you want to know a really great way to spend some of the next 10 years, Go to Spartan.com slash podcast. You're going to meet tons of great people. You're going to see tons of great interviews. And you're going to learn a lot of really great tips that are going to help you in your life. So Spartan.com slash podcast. Join us every week. Thanks so much. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Aftershock's open ear headphones. Visit Spartan.Aftershocks.com for $30 off a wireless pair. That's Spartan.Aftershocks, S-H-O-K-Z dot com. Thank you for watching another epic story of success. If you like our message, please share Spartan Up with your friends and subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, or wherever you catch our show, maybe in the woods. Spartan Up is brought to you by Spartan Race. To find a race near you, visit Spartan.com. (laughs) 